KWT slaying. Salama family, Salama, how y'all doing today? Hope you're blessed and highly favored. So when we talk about who's going to be saved, we talk about salvation, things like that. What I've come to realize, you know, when it comes to the scriptures in general, right? It, you know, it's not that simple, right? And it's not that easy believism that you have in Eurocentric Christianity. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying you're going you're to be saved by your works, right? But your works, uh, it foreshadows or shows, you know, uh, the commitment that you have to the most high. It also foreshadows a true faith. And we sort of talked about that in the past, right? About, you know, active faith. We talked about that. And when you look at the scriptures, I find that there's a lot of nuances. It's not as simple as people want you to think it is. Some things are. Now, salvation is by grace through faith in Yeshua alone. Yes, that's simple. But what's required of us and what we're called to do isn't simple. The message that the Bible has, other than gospel of grace because there's the gospel of grace and there's the gospel of the kingdom see they don't teach you that and that's what i mean when i say there's complexities you cool but what's the difference i thought there was only the gospel that's what christianity teach but when yeshua came he, he came what preaching the gospel of what the kingdom and when this gospel, what? The gospel of the kingdom is preached to the whole world, then the end shall come. Well, what's the difference between that and the gospel of grace? Well, I got a video on that. You could go watch it. It's called the two types of salvations. But today I wanted to talk about the difficulty, the difficulty of entering into the kingdom. Well, Jacob, I thought you said we're saved by grace through faith. Yes, we are. But even the apostles said, Lord, you know, in our King James Version, transliterations, they say, Lord, then who can be saved? With man, it's impossible. But with Yah, all things are possible. Now, we usually stop there, but there's a dynamic, like I said in the beginning, of nuances. There's nuances throughout the scripture. And there's things that's required of us as obedient children. And if we're not obedient children, then we're disobedient children, and disobedient children are going to get smacked. But that's for the children. But then you have the Gentiles. Now, before I continue, you know, because I, I, I know I'm going to get all this heat and all this stuff, you know, and the same old talking points. But, you know, Matthew 15, 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
Now, some people say, well, you know, Israel needed to be saving, right? Israel needed to be saved. Yes, we, we did and we do. We did and we do. And was he sent but to the lost sheep? Yes, he was. I told y'all our people was a mess. I even did a teaching about the sheep being cast amongst the mountains, right? Which is representative of the nations. And the sheep were lost. The sheep went into the kingdoms as slaves. They forgot who they were, their identity, and all these things. See, this is the nuance of the scripture. See, this is the type of thing that the Christians don't talk about because everybody the same. No more Jew, Greek. That's what they tell us. But there's nuances. Because when you say no more Jew Greek, slave free, male, female, are you telling me there's no more male females? Are you telling me there's no more slaves? The Bible says slaves are gonna be here forever, at least until Yeshua comes. So somebody tell me what it means it means on a spiritual level there's no difference right and when it comes to salvation there's no difference and when it comes to salvation in christ we all got to come in one way we all got to come in one way but what about the nuances because see christianity teaches you hey you ain't got to do nothing but believe Luke 13, 23 to 28, someone asked him, Yahuwah, are only a few people going to be saved? This is the question. But some people want to teach that everybody's the same. We're all getting in the same. There's nothing required of you but belief. Now, belief is the mechanism, right? Because Whatever's not a faith is sin. And, you know, if you sin and, you know, so that's what I'm talking about, the nuances. So he said to them, make every effort. What? We got to make an effort? Christianity said, I just got to believe. Somebody says that everybody the same. Everybody believe in God. If you believe in a God and you believe in a single God and, and you know, then, then you getting in because... You believe in God and you obeying God. No. He said to them, make every effort to enter through the narrow door. It's an effort. It's an effort. Make every effort to enter in through the narrow door because many, not few, many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Many people trying to get in. Christians trying to get in. Muslims trying to get in. Israelites trying to get in. Buddhists trying to get in. Ish people trying to get in. Many people trying to get in. But then many of them not going to be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, so there's a time frame. There's not, it's not going to be open always. So once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, sir, open up, open the door. Can we come in? See, see, people be be tripping. People be acting like, you know, it's, you know, it's easy, easy believism. You don't have to fight. What? But but the most high said what? Make every effort. Can we come in? Too late, the door closed. But he would answer, I, I, I don't know you like that. Who are you? Where you come from? I don't know you like that. See, 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 this the kind of stuff that should make you fear. Well, we're not given the spirit of fear, but power and joy and love of a sound mind. I mean reverence. I mean fear of the power of the most high that, you know, the one who could put both the soul and body in hell, that God, that Elohim, that king, that savior see the nuances between the love of the most high and his judgment the nuances 
between the most high who says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. The nuances. See, nobody want to talk about the nuances. It's all easy. Everybody Israel now. The Christian is, a, is Israel. And Israel is Israel. No distinction. The nuances. They're missing the nuances. Israel still Israel. Gentiles still Gentiles. And Gentiles not the northern tribe. But people want to ignore these things and they want to come up with their own belief system. Do you not fear the most high? I fear him. I pray most high keep me on that straight and narrow path. Keep me on a narrow road. Present me to yourself without spot, blemish, and wrinkle because I know without you I can do nothing. But see, people don't want to make distinctions. They don't want to look at the nuances. They say the church is Israel. Anybody who believes is there. No, 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 no. See, the nuances says this. And, it, you know, it all interweaves. But there's nuances within the scripture. The nuances says this, that there was a people called Israel. And those people went into captivity worldwide as slaves. And those people had their heritage and identity taken from them. Oh, yes, the Bible teaches that if you didn't know. Oh, yes, it teaches that. And so, therefore, they forgot who they were. But the Bible says that they would wake up one day. And that's happened. But then you got the Christians, you got the Israelites, you got the, some of the believers who say, well, ain't no Israel no more. We all Israel. We all sons of God. See, there might be a point in the fact that we're all sons of God because sons of God just means that Yeshua is our Savior and Father Yah is our daddy. But see, you got the original and then you got the adopted. You got the original firstborn kid, then you got the adopted kid. Whereby they cry, or we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit of adoption, the Bible says, we're adopted into the kingdom. The Gentiles are adopted into the kingdom. Israel had to be grafted back in, but they're the original. They're the firstborn. I'm just saying you got to deal with the nuances. There's a difference between the firstborn and the adopted kid. There's a rule, there's laws that talk about the double portion that the original firstborn gets in comparison to the adopted kid who came in by the spirit of adoption. The Bible says that by Israel fall, the Gentiles were able to come in. The Bible says what will be when Israel is restored, but life from the dead. See, there's nuances. Don't act like Israel don't exist. Don't act like there's no original Israelite. Don't act like the chosen people disappeared from the planet. Don't act like the, the, the adopted kid has replaced or equal to the firstborn. No, there's laws. And so my point being is that there's these nuances in Scripture that we have to pay attention to. And people make up their own doctrine. People make up their own doctrine. You can come in. You can come in just because you believe that the Father exists, where the devils believe and tremble. Just because you believe that, that, that the Father exists, but you deny the Son, you ain't coming in. See, you don't understand that. Matthew 7, 13, enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it. Most people on the wide path. Christianity, how many Christian believers is there in the world? Billions that identify as Christians. How many Muslims is there in the world? Billions, if you look at them. And then you got the offshoots. 
And then you got the Israelites. And then you got the Israelites who believe and follow Yeshua. And then you got the Israelites who deny Yeshua. Then you got the Israelites who say that Joseph is Yeshua's daddy. Physical. But the Bible said the Holy Spirit is the one that overshadowed Mary. But, but, but see, the nuances is where they don't understand. The nuances is that God himself says there is no Savior but God himself. There is no Savior but God himself. So Yeshua came and saved us. So therefore, there is no Savior but God himself because Yeshua is God. He's the word of God. The, the word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us. The nuances is where they miss it, right? Because here's the thing. You got the whole idea of the Trinity. Now, my thing is this. There's different viewpoints on the Trinity because I've, I've talked to different Christians, mind you. And it gets, they gets me confused. One think they're three different gods. That's a lie. And the others, they think that it's only the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, well, if the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they all are one, then that's only one God. Well, how can that be? Because Christ has his own will but he followed the will of the father the nuances because the bible tells you the nuances and this is what i'm talking about is that people get confused and that's why i say the bible is not simple because the bible tells you that yeshua is the visible image of the invisible god how many times i gotta say that one because the father is a spirit it's the nuances that people miss. And it's the nuances that get people in trouble. And this is one of the reasons I think that, you know, and, and I pray it's not the case, but it seems like few people are going to be saved according to the scripture because y'all don't understand that Yeshua is God. And every religion ain't getting you in there. As a matter of fact, ain't no religion getting you in there. Belief in the Savior is going to get you into the kingdom. Not only that, obedience. Well, work's not going to get us in, Jacoba, because we're not under the law. I will show you my faith by my works. Faith without works is dead. What does that mean? That means it's not active faith. That faith cannot be applied to the faith that you say you have that you might get into the kingdom by faith in Christ. Because if your faith don't produce works, your faith is a dead faith. See, the nuances. See, this is why I say the Bible is not simple. Understanding it is not simple. Understanding salvation is not simple. Understanding the mysteries in the scripture is not simple because nobody want to look at the nuances. Why? Because it makes your head hurt. Well, how can the father be the son? How can the son be the father? How can the Holy Spirit be the father? How can they all be the father? Who was Christ talking to? Who was the father talking to when he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased? See, the nuances. Because God is telling you how he exists within this world or in the spirit realm, how, how he exists. He told, he told you, he told you, I'm the father, which is a spirit. I'm the son, which is the manifested word of God in human flesh. And I'm the Holy Spirit, who is the power of God. But we are the same essence. Well, you can't be that way because that's not the way we made. And we got our own brain and we got our own hearts and we got our own limbs and we got our own spirit. We don't live like that. We just one person. So we don't understand. So that can't be right. When God told you this, who I am, 
the nuances this is what people miss right and this is what gets people in trouble luke 13 24 strive to enter in at the straight gate for many i say unto you will seek to enter in and shall not be able everybody want to go to heaven everybody want to get in god's kingdom everybody ain't going Everybody won't get in, but everybody ain't going. Does that not scare you? To live on this hellish earth, suffer, deal with all the perversion and the wickedness, and you don't make it in? Strive to enter in the straight gate. Strive. You got to fight. But they say you ain't got to do nothing but believe. You got to fight. Strive to enter in the straight gate. It's narrow. It's narrow. Everybody can't fit. Everybody can't fit. It's narrow. Well, Muslims believe in God, so they're going into the kingdom. It's narrow. Mormons believe in God. It's narrow. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. They're not getting in, though they want to get in. The nuances. Jeremiah 6, 16. Thus says Yahuwah, stand ye in the ways and see. And as for the old paths, where is the good way? Where is the good way? Where is the good way? And walk therein. Where is it? I can't find it. And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Some of y'all say, we ain't walking in that. In that. We, we want to go in our own way. I know you said it's straight. I know you said I got to fight my way in. I, I know you said it's an effort. But I'm going to be self-inclusive and I'm going to include everybody. I'm going to include the Muslims. I'm going to include the Buddhists and I'm going to include the Mormons and I'm going to include this and I'm going to include that. But I ain't going to. But but you ain't doing what he told you to do. You're not obeying his word. You're not following the narrow path. I told you it's difficult. The nuances. Well, it's by. Grace you saved through faith. But yeah, what kind of faith you got? Is it dead? If it's dead, faith is not going to work for you. Well, how do I get active live faith? I will show you my faith by my works. Oh, so my works is the active faith that is, t is being talked about. That's being applied. See, the nuances, I told you, it's not simple. John 14, 6, Yeshua said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay, so the path is narrow. Few that be that find it. The way is narrow. Few enter in. The way is narrow that they must enter in through Yeshua, who's the way, the path. The way is narrow that you must enter in by grace through faith. The way is narrow because that faith must be active faith, not dead faith. The way is narrow because that faith means I must produce good works. The way is narrow because I must have good fruit. See, it ain't simple. It ain't that simple. 
Don't get it twisted. It ain't that simple. The, the most high says, you knew I was an austere man. Talking about the parable. You knew I was an austere man. Where's my money with usury? See, see, y'all, y'all still think he that God of uh, Christianity who just overlooks sin, who have no standards. And because you say, I meant to do right, my heart was right, but you ain't even trying. You ain't pressing in because what? Straight is the way. It's narrow. You got to fight your way in. There must be effort. But Yeshua is the way. You want to find out how to get into the kingdom, you got to find out by going through the sun. But how do I go through the sun? Obedience. You let me keep my commandments. Oh, but the laws are done away with. That's what they tell us. The nuances. No one comes to the Father except by me. But some of y'all once said we could come to the Father any way we want. I could come through Islam. I could come through Buddhism. I could come through Zoroastrianism. I can come through this and I could come through that. It don't matter so long as my heart is right and pure. But some of them deny the sun. How they getting in? I just read it to you. Yeshua said, I'm the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I'm where life is. Nobody coming to my father but through me. But y'all say it don't matter what you believe. You could be, you could be all these other belief systems. So long as your heart is right. Many want to get in though. I read it to you. Many want to get in but ain't getting in. Many were trying to get into the kingdom, but they're trying to come up another way. Many want to be in God's kingdom and live with God, but they're trying to get in another way. Well, you know, we're, we're part of the Abrahamic faith. Many trying to get in, but denying the son. Acts 14 and 22, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to what? Enter the kingdom of God. It ain't easy. If it was easy, why do we go through hardships? We must through much hardship into the kingdom. It's an effort. We must press in. We must be obedient. We must seek his word. We must seek his will. We must try to please the king. If you love me, keep my commandments. Obedience is better than sacrifice. But y'all want to act like it don't matter what you believe. You can believe what you want. So long as you believe in the father. The father says, here's my son. The father says, here's my son. Believe ye him. Believe ye him. A lot of people ain't getting in. It's a remnant. Only a remnant. Philippians 3.14, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which Yahuwah has called me heavenward in Yeshua. So I'm running a race. What happens when you run a race? You put forth what? Effort. What happens when you run a race? You get tired. What happens when you run a race? You might trip and hurt yourself but you get back up and keep going. I press. What does press mean? I'm fighting. I'm doing my best. I'm using effort to press in. I press on toward the goal to win the prize. I'm in the race. I got to make it to the finish line. I ain't at the finish line yet. 
I didn't win yet. I ain't crossed the finish line yet. When I die, then I cross the finish line. So long as I'm in faith and I'm obedient, I'm producing good fruit. I have faith that produces good fruit. I have faith that produces good works. I don't have dead faith. So I press toward the goal to win the prize. God knows my heart. You like people that look just like you and the same, you know, trying not to get shut down. Alphabets. God knows my heart. Whoremonger. God knows my heart. 304. God knows my heart because I go to church and I jump up and down. But on Friday, I'm in the club sleeping around. The heart is desperately wicked. Who knows it? Don't that Bible scare you? The heart is desperately wicked. Who knows it? See, it's hard being a truth ministry because you got to come with the truth and the truth don't always feel good. The truth convicts. The truth hurts. See, the truth is that God said do this, but you won't do that, which if you do anything other than what God says or Father Yah says, it's a lie. You need to do what he says, not what you think he said. Some people get on me. Some people get on me because I say Gentiles could be saved. Some people get on me because I say you Gentiles need to repent. But see, my father told me to go to the Jew first, which is what I do, and then to the Gentiles. That's how I roll. You think I care what you think? You ain't got no heaven or hell to put me in. You think I care what you feel like because I say the Gentiles are not the northern tribes? Do you think I care because you hate me or mad at me because I I don't agree we from America or that we Native American Indians? You think I care about that? Don't you know my God says he's an austere God? See, God don't play. I don't know what God you worship. But my God's a king. Say, most high, may I enter your presence, please, bowing my head down in all humility. May I enter your presence, my king, my holy master. Best make sure you stand before the king with the righteousness of the son. Because your righteousness is as filthy rags. 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8. I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I've kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which Yahuwah, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Who's going to appear? Is the father going to appear? Or is it the son? Who is going to appear? Who's going to give you the crown? Who's going to be your judge? Well, the father put everything what in subjection to the son. Why? Because the son is the father. Why? Because everything that the son is doing, the father was doing through the son. The son and the father are the same. The same essence. That's the Bible. Keep it in context. Keep it balanced. But no. 
it's too hard for some of y'all. It's too hard for some of y'all. I can't believe that the father is the son and the son is the father. It's too hard for some of y'all. Some of y'all want your own religion. Some of y'all want your own belief system. Some of y'all want to make that path a little wider. We're going to let all other faiths come in. Y'all could come in, even though they reject the sun. They don't believe in the sun. We're going to let everybody in because everybody's heart is right. No, it don't work that way. Fear God. Keep his commandments. God is an austere God. His expectations is holiness. His expectation is righteousness. His expectation is you doing good. His expectation is for you to run the race. His expectation is for you to sweat. His expectation is for you to overcome trials and tribulations. His expectation is for you to be the son that he wants you to be. Oh, yeah. But people ignore the nuances. Why? Because the nuances put the difficulty in this message. It ain't just easy believism, is it? You got to do something. You has to be obedient. You have to accomplish what the Father has told you to accomplish. Or else you ain't getting in. For I can do all things through the Messiah who is my strength. So I can do it. I can obey. I can. I can press in. I can win this race because I can't do it by myself because I, I get tired. I get tired running the race. I'm not in great shape. Well, we're going to get you in shape, boy. Get out there in that track. Go run uh, that nine yard dash or 50 yard dash, whatever it is. Y'all know what it is. It's been, it's been years since I was in track. Get out there and run. It. Go around that track like 20 times. I can't do that. That's too much. I'm going to be worn out. You know this flesh is weak. Yeah. It's, it's impossible for you. But it's, a, it's possible for me working in you. See, y'all don't understand the nuances. John 14, 6, Yeshua answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He's the gate. He's the narrow way. If you try to come in any other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But some of y'all want to make the path wide. The path can't be moved. The path cannot be widened. It's very narrow. And few that be that finds it. John 6, 66 through 69. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Y'all going to leave too? Y'all going to leave too? Y'all going to say, you could come in this way. Y'all could come in that way. You could come in that way and this way. Y'all want the easy path, don't you? You do not want to leave too, do you? Simon Peter answered him, Yahuwah, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We've come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. We know you the way. We can't go nowhere else. Where is that? Who else preaching salvation? I hear people preaching just straight up obedience. Let me go walk around the Kaaba. Who preaching salvation? Who preaching to come to the Father by grace through faith? Who's preaching these things? But you. There's no other way. We know the way is narrow. Where, where are we going to go? You going to leave too? You're going to be like all these other people. You're going to go to voodoo. You're going to go to ancestor worship. 
You gonna go to manifesting? You gonna go to Islam? You gonna go to all of these other religions? I'm not there. I'm right here. I'm the word. I'm the only way to the Father. See, this ain't about religion. It's about relationship. It ain't about religion. It's about obedience. It ain't about religion. It's about covenant. See, there's a people that God chose for himself. They're part of the plan. You ain't know that. You ain't know that the cast out, the scattered, the exiled, chosen ones are part of the plan. Oh, you ain't know that, did you? Oh, it don't matter. No more Jew Greek. No more Jew Greek. But my people are to be a light to the Gentiles. Why? To show them the narrow path, to show them the way out of darkness, to show them to the Savior. That's why I had to go to the Jew first, because my covenant is with them. Because I have a job for them to do. They have a testimony to give. They going to tell the world that God sent his people into captivity. And if he did it to them, he'll do it to you. So you best obey. God has a people that he chose for himself to show forth God's glory. God has a people that he's going to bring back to the land and restore them as a nation that has been dead for over 2,000 years. God has a chosen people that's going to be a light on the path to Yeshua because they're going to see that everything that word says came to pass. They're going to bow at your feet and know that I have what? Loved you. Why? Because it's a testimony. It's a testimony. God does what he says, and he means what he says, and every jot and tittle is going to come to pass. Whether or not you want to twist it and say that the Gentiles are Israel, whether or not you want to twist it and say it don't matter, these people don't matter no more because they fell from their God and God dealt with them and sent them away. It don't matter what you say. It's what the word says. See, I told you there's nuances. There's a purpose for everything under the sun. Them people went into captivity. Why? To deal with them, but also to deal with you. Don't boast against the natural branches, because if you boast against the natural branches, guess what? I might do the same to you. See, that's the God I know. They don't teach you that in church. Romans 9, 26 to 28. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Now, this initially happened to Israel, but they were not a people. Then they were called the people of God. But here is used as an example to show that Gentiles can come in. Isaiah also cried concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be at the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Only a remnant, only a remnant. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a short work will Yahuwah make upon earth. Only a remnant. Everybody who says, Lord, Lord, ain't entering the kingdom. But he who does the will of the Father. Well, what's the will of the Father? This was written in the book. Well, what's written in the book? 
them laws. But we're not under the law. No, we're not under the strict adherence of it because the letter kill it, but the spirit gives it life. What does that mean? Go read it, tailministries.com. First Peter 1 7, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perished, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yeshua. This walk ain't easy. Who told you this walk was easy? You're going to go through trials. Your faith going to be tested. Some going to pass and some going to fail. Hopefully it's not failure unto death. You run in a race. You're looking to go get the prize of eternal life. But you're going to go through some tests. Job went through some tests. His wife said, curse, curse God and die. He said, you foolish woman. Is you crazy? Curse God and die. Is you out your mind? He's eternal life. You must be out your cotton picking mind. Foolish woman. You're going to be tested. People close to you going to test you. People close to you going to deceive you. People close to you going to lead you down the wrong path. They're going to lead you on that open road where everybody is. Is everybody over there? You might not want to be over there. Is everybody over there? Maybe you're in the wrong spot. Is everybody over there? Let's hold hands together and sing Kumbaya. We are the world. We are the future. Maybe you shouldn't be there. Is everybody over there? Hey, let's start this new world order, one world government. Maybe you're in the wrong spot. Luke 19, 27, but those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring them here there and slay them before me. See, that sound like the God of Christianity to you? See, my enemies, they don't want me reign over them. Bring them over here. Slay them. Kill them right before me. See, don't be playing. Don't get it twisted. This is the God of the Bible. Merciful, long-suffering, loving, but he deal harshly with disobedient folks. He deal harshly with the wicked. He deal harshly with his enemies. But God knows my heart. He loves everybody. God loves everybody. Well, he's going to be slaying people who don't want him to rule over them. Over, over them. The nuances. John 5, 43. I am come in my father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you're going to receive. See, some of y'all like, okay, well, you know. He's a good guy. That religion has very good precepts and tenets. Even though they march around the Kaaba, they're good people. They got good morals. They never worship idols. Don't you know Islam worshiped the moon goddess? I'm just saying. Revelation 13, 8. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life. The Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. See, there's a Lamb that was given 
for the forgiveness of sin. See, y'all, y'all got to understand this. You can't just be in any old belief system and people who got good works because your righteousness is as filthy rags. No, you have to believe in the only begotten son. You got to trust in the finished work of Christ. You got to trust in the finished work of the Messiah. He's the narrow way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. I don't care what you say. And I don't care if you say these other religions are good. They ain't because they reject the son. Well, we worship the father. You reject the son, you're going to burn. Neither is salvation in any other. Where's your sacrifice? There's only one lamb. See, this is why people going to worship the beast. Why are they going to worship the beast, Jacoba? Because they think you can come in any old way. You could come in through any religion, any belief system. That's how they're going to worship the beast. But the ones of us who say, nah. Yeshua is our king. We don't worship nobody else but Yeshua. My sheep hear my voice. They, they're not following nobody else. My sheep hear my voice. If you don't hear his voice, if you don't worship the son, if you don't follow the son, maybe you're not his. Hmm. Ever thought of that? Maybe you're not his. Revelation 20, verse 15, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Is your name in the book? Is it? Remember, Luke 13 says the door is narrow. The way is narrow. He warns us that many are going to try to enter in and not be able to. See, that narrow way, it represents exclusivity. It represents a need for earnest commitment to Yeshua. It emphasizes the importance of following Yeshua. A true commitment A casual belief ain't enough. Easy believism is not enough. Everybody who's familiar with Christ is not going to be with Christ. There must be genuine change. There must be a genuine relationship with him. Genesis 22. Sometime later, Yahuwah tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am. He replied. Then Yahuwah said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain. I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, remember that's teaching I did on the third day? On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servant, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. So he knew they were going to come back. He knew God was faithful. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering. Now, remember, the Messiah, Christ, carried, they say, his cross or that piece of wood, that stake, whatever you want to call it. Christ carried that wood. God himself carried that wood. 
Abraham took the wood for a burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife as the two of them went on together. Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, Father, the fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, Yahuwah himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. Now, where your lamb coming from? Who provided your lamb? See, God provided the lamb himself. God brought the wood, symbolic, when Abraham brought the wood, symbolic, when Christ carried his cross or the wood. God brought everything for the sacrifice. He brought the lamb. There's no other lamb given, no other name given where we must be saved. There's only one lamb of God, and his name is Yeshua. God provided the sacrifice. You can't come in any old kind of way. You can't do things the way you want, because our God is a fearful God. Haven't you seen him? Didn't you see what happened at the Exodus? Did you not see the clouds by day and the fire by night? Did you not see at the mount that there was lightning and thundering? Who are you following? There's only one lamb. It's God himself. There's no other savior but God himself. It all lines up. But some of y'all reject the sacrifice. Some of y'all want to bring in your own sacrifice, but God said there's only one sacrifice for sin, the lamb that he provides. God provided the lamb. He provided the lamb. His name is Yeshua. That's his son. This is my beloved son in whom I well please. Hear ye him. Hear ye him. So we got to understand that God provides the sacrifice. Matthew 21. What a when the Lord, therefore, of the vineyard come, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They say unto him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits of their season. In their season, Yeshua said unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected the same as become the head of the corner? This is Yahuwah's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall will, will grind him to powder. Some of y'all are going to be ground to powder. powder. See, the ones who fall on the Savior, the ones who fall on the sacrifice, the ones whose sins are forgiven, they're going to be broken, but they're going to live. They must die so they can rise again. But whomsoever it shall fall on, which means he's going to destroy some of y'all. He going to grind you to powder. Because you didn't made up your own doctrine. You didn't rejected the son. You didn't replace his word with your own meanings. You didn't deny the truth of the scripture. The stone that the builders rejected became the chief of the corner, but you rejected the stone. So therefore, he's going to fall on you and grind you to powder. But the ones who fall on the stone, they're going to be broken but live. 
Their wills are going to be broken, but live. Remember, there was a stone cut out of the mountain that comes and destroyed the feet of that world governmental system, that statue of Daniel. That's the same stone. That's the same stone in the book of Revelation. That's coming and he's going to be riding on a white horse, treading the wine press of the wrath of God. See, there's nuances. Ain't nothing worse than those who ignore the nuances. Ain't nothing worse than those who say Joseph is the true father of the Messiah and not Father Yah himself. Ain't nothing worse than those who twist the clear meaning of the text. See, there's a lot of people trying to get in. But they're trying to come in another way. There's a lot of people wishing to enter in and not going to make it in. There's a lot of people who think they can believe and do whatever they want, but they need to go back to the old paths. The old paths tell you the way. The old paths leads you to the Messiah. You think you have eternal life, but it is this which testifies of me, says Yeshua. See, don't get it twisted. This is a, an exclusive belief system. You can't do what you want. You can't believe what you want. You got to believe in the Lamb of God. You can't do what you want. You got to obey his law, statutes, and commandments. Not to obtain salvation, but obedience. Well, Jacoba, if we love, then we fulfill the law. Well, what's love? What's love? Well, I love you. I do good to you. That, and, I, and, and I love you in my heart. So therefore, okay. So you saying the moral laws then. You keeping those moral laws? I want to know the will of the Father. Well, it's written in the book. Thou shalt have no other gods besides me. Don't make no graven images. Don't cover your neighbor's wife, his goods, or his, you know, ass. A donkey. Don't 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 move your neighbor's stone, right? That shows where the property line is. See, those laws still valid for a nation. Those laws are still valid for eating. I ain't saying you're going to hell for eating no pork, but you might get sick. See, here's the thing. You don't have to agree with me. The word is the word and the word is clear. One day, we all going to find out. But here's the thing. Did I not say that the Most High is an austere God? Did I not say he expect interest with the money? And responsibilities that he gave you. If what you teach and do lead people astray, you're going to be held accountable. This is why we must pursue truth. This is why we must explain the context of the scriptures. This is why we must see if there's a bigger story going on or a deeper message here. If you don't understand the little things, how are you going to understand spiritual things? See, this is the problem. And I think some people are stuck where they're at because their heart ain't right. Some people are stuck where they're at because they glory in their ethnicity. Some people are stuck where they're at because they don't understand that it's all about the Messiah. Some people are stuck where they're at because they don't believe that it's all about the king. Don't get it twisted. 
It's about the king. It ain't about you. It ain't about me. And we don't have no normal right to enter into his presence. It's his grace and mercy. Christians ain't got all things wrong. They definitely don't have all things right. But I could tell you one thing, just my opinion. A lot of Christians are going to get in before you. Because they know where their faith is. It's in the sun. And I'm talking about the believing remnant that obeys his word. The believing remnant that does what those moral laws says. I've seen so much crazy doctrine today. From Mormon Israelites to Israelites who think we from America to the Congo boys. You name it, to the rejection of the deity of Christ from the rejection of the the rejection of Yeshua being the son of God. How are you going to say Yeshua is not the son of God? Most people, most people don't even know that all that means is that Yeshua's daddy is for the yacht. And then the scripture that says, have you not heard you or gods? It's the children of the most high. What does that mean? That's my daddy. That's all it means. Them baptized, blood washed Gentiles whose sins are forgetting, forgiven and trusting Yeshua for salvation. That's their daddy. They sons of God. Israelites born again, redeemed. That's their daddy. They sons of God. Children of God might be better. All it means is it's my daddy. Them angels, they were sons of God. God created them. God was their daddy. Or is their daddy, the ones who are still obedient, but not the fallen ones. That's all it means. See, some things are simple and some things are complex. Don't get it twisted. It ain't that easy. It's not that clear. Paul is a little difficult to understand sometimes. Even Peter said that. Paul is hard to understand. It's true. You got to spend time in the word. What's the difference between the spirit of the law and the letter of the law? If you don't know, go to tellministries.com. It's not that simple. There's nuances. Well, all I got to say, closing, that what we're dealing with today is a time of testing, a time of oppression, a time of warfare, a time of judgment. And everybody's going to be tested to see where they stand, what kind of fruit being produced. Are they doing this for themselves? Are they doing it for Yeshua? Are they glorifying in the ethnicity? Are they glorifying in, in the Messiah? Is their heart to win many souls to the kingdom? Or is it for them to rule and reign? Is their heart to serve the living God? What the scripture says, I know nothing but Christ and him crucified. That's all I know. I don't glory in nothing else. 
Now, will I stand up for my people? Oh, yeah, I'm going to stand up for my people. Am I going to tell the truth and say that according to the scriptures, Israel rule over the Gentiles? Oh, yeah, there's a difference. I'm, I'm going to say that. Am I going to tell the truth and say that the Gentiles are going into captivity because of what their ancestors and them did to us? Oh, yes, I'm going to say that. I'm not going any further or any less than what the word says. I'm not trying to take nothing out of context. I'm going to stay with the clear meaning. I'm going to go to my concordance. I'm going to get the original word. Because guess what? You got to do that sometimes. You got to understand that the Red Sea may not be mean the Red Sea, that it's the Yom Suf, which means it's a river. You got to do that sometimes. I told you it's not simple. You got to go in there and understand that Easter is not supposed to be in the Bible. It's Passover. There's things like that in the Bible you got to understand. It's not that simple. We must through much tribulation into the kingdom. It's not as simple as they would have you believe. Peace and blessings, Israel. Your captivity is ending. Love you with the love of the Messiah. If you want to support this ministry, please do so. Uh, by becoming a patron and also a cash app, dollar sign T O T W 7101. Also, you can like if you haven't liked this video, please like it, share it, and uh, for those who are new to this uh channel, you know, please support us. Uh, you know, not many people who listen to us support us, and um. Also, don't forget, uh, Quest to Unite Africa, uh, they have a summit coming up. Uh, go check in our community to get the date and the time. And also, uh, also uh, Dry Bones Project. Please support the Dry Bones Project. Go to their channels, support them, and find out what's going on on the continent. Peace out. Thank you.